Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life. In today's video, spark plug change on the SeaDoo GTX. This is the 155 horsepower version, Rotex 4Tech engine. This is a very easy process. Just follow along step by step and you'll have no trouble at all. The things you'll need, I like to use a little bit of anti-seize on the spark plugs when I put the new ones in. Also dielectric grease. A uh, small pair of needle nose pliers. We may not even need those. 16 millimeter socket, extension, and I like to use a 5 8 spark plug boot socket. My ratchet wrench. I have a, a quarter inch ratchet that has, a, that has a 10 millimeter socket on it. And then you're gonna need three brand new spark plugs. I highly recommend the NGK. DCPR8E and it's their number 4339. I'll put links to all these things down below in the description. They will be Amazon affiliate links, so it won't cost you any more, but it will give us credit for sending you to Amazon. Now you're gonna start off by removing the seat. If you've never owned a jet ski before or a sea doo and aren't sure how to do that, back here by the rear handle, there's a little clip. You're just gonna pull up on that and then it pulls out this way. Same thing right here. There's another little handle back here. Just gonna unlatch it. Pull the front section of the seat out. There's also this little bin that we'll take out that is supposed to have extra spark plugs in it. I bought six, three to replace and three so I'd have them here on the machine. Next thing we wanna do is take our 10 millimeter socket and remove these bolts that are on this brace piece between the two, the front half and the back half, or the front seat and the back seat. Keep track of these because you do not want to lose the washer or the bolt. A little bit of why I'm doing this, uh, in a previous video I, I did a video about a relaxing ride on the Clarion River. And that time and one other time we took this jet ski out, it's new to us to use jet ski. We'll be doing a video in the future on things to look for on a used jet ski. But on the first two rides with this jet ski, we noticed that there were some issues with how it ran. We couldn't ever reach full RPMs. So there were a couple potential issues that could have caused that. One is bad gas or dormant gas. So this machine has only ever used ethanol free, but even ethanol free, you know, it can get dormant or stale if it sits too long. And in Northwest Pennsylvania, these machines sit usually from August or September all the way until April or May. So to, to try to remedy that issue, I've been running as much gas of it, out of it as possible on the river, and I just keep adding more ethanol-free gas to it to try to dilute that bad gas, if that's the issue. The other potential issue is the spark plugs. These Fortec Sea-Doo machines are very picky about their spark plugs. That's actually why the spark plug container is in that back compartment. So. It just makes sense, the next logical step is to replace those spark plugs and then we'll take this on a ride tomorrow morning on the Clarion River and see if that solved the problem. It could very well be both things. It could be stale gas and needs new spark plugs. Now that is all that we will need the 10 millimeter wrench for. Attached to this piece is the coolant tank. So we do need to slide it off there's just little clips over here that you want to push in while sliding that up out it's a little bit of a tight squeeze but you can do it and then just kind of set it off to the side there you can see this comes right out we'll take this out also There you can see we have access to a section of the engine. Now to get this cover off, we do need to remove 
the oil dipstick and I brought a rag out with me to set that on. And then on the side of this plastic piece, both sides, there's a little clip that we need to push in on while lifting it off. These little clips right here were on the side. I just pushed in while lifting up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil dipstick back in just to keep stuff from going down in there. Now Jennifer's gonna film so you can get a better view of this from that other angle, it was hard to see. These are your three spark plugs. Let me start out by saying I am not by any means a mechanic. I am purple color though, so I don't mind trying things like this. And this is a pretty simple task. So I think if you give it a try, you'll be okay. Now we're gonna pull the spark plug boot off just by twisting this a little bit and lifting up. Now these will have kind of sat on there. They've heated up and sometimes they're a little bit hard to come off. And when I put this back in, I'll put a little bit of dielectric grease up here and here. But my spark plug is way down in there. How are you going to get that out? Well, the instructions say to use this 16 millimeter socket, loosen it up, then use needle nose pliers to pull it out. But with my brand new spark plugs, I already have tried this and my 5 8 spark plug socket you know a spark plug socket has a built-in section like a rubber silicone section that helps hold on to the spark plug so that i will keep a hold of it when i'm pulling it up out so i'm going to use 5 8 because 5 8 is close enough to 16 millimeters so there's a tip for you even though the instructions say 16 millimeter deep socket use a 5 8 spark plug socket so if i reach this down in here I should get it right over the spark plug and then it'll hold on to it when I pull it out. You're so smart. So there's our spark plug. Didn't have to use the needle nose pliers and it doesn't actually look too bad, but like I have read in all the forums, these engines are really particular about their spark plugs, so it's possible this is the issue. We're gonna change this out and see if that helps. Another thing we wanna do is make sure that our gap is appropriate. So I'm gonna get my spark plug gap tool. We'll check to make sure this is what the manual says it should be. So I'll take the old spark plug out of the spark plug boot, and it was the exact same. We've got the new spark plug here. We are gonna check the gap. According to my manual, it should be 0.03 inches. And if you don't have a spark plug gap tool, I'll put a, a link to this also down in the Amazon affiliate link, but it's probably cheaper, cheaper for you to find this at a Napa or any of your auto parts stores. So there we are, 0.03. And I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of anti-seize on there. And again, that spark plug wrench is gonna hold it in place. Just let me screw it down in there. You do not wanna over tighten these, so just a little bit of a turn should be good. And then when you lift up on this, you wanna make sure you get your wrench out with it. What we might have to do is put a little bit of grease on the wrench. Cause I don't think we can grab it with these. Oh yeah, we can. So there we go. We did end up using the needle nose pliers, but just to get the spark plug wrench out. So I'd rather reach down in to get that than the spark plug itself. Then again, a little bit of dielectric grease will keep this from sticking. So I'm just gonna put a little bit here in the end and a little bit up here. We wanna make sure we put push this down so that it seals really well. And I see our problem 
you look right there, there's no top on this spark plug. This next one is the exact same way. So we'll take this spark plug back out. Hopefully you watched this video the whole way through before you started the process. But we'll take this spark plug back out and have to take that top off. The little cap can unscrew, but I put dielectric grease on it so it's very slippery. So why would it come with that if it doesn't need it? Different applications. These spark plugs are used in a lot of different machines. See a little bit of dirt. You don't want any dirt to go down in your combustion chamber. There we go, first one done. You're so smart. Thank you, I appreciate that. Now we'll do the same process for the other two and then I'll, once those are done, I'll show you putting everything back together. Okay, now we'll put everything back together. And before we take it to the lake, we wanna start it up just for a few seconds, make sure it starts and runs okay. These bolts are actually sandwiching these two pieces together. Have you ever done this before? First time. You just figured out? I watched a guy on YouTube once. I hope this video does help someone else out. I also hope that it solves our running issue. Now, a lot of times for projects like this, I might use my impact gun, but these bolts are screwing into plastic, and I don't like to use an impact gun when screwing a bolt, a threaded bolt into plastic. I don't want a chance stripping out that plastic, so to me, it's better to just do it by hand. And it makes your arms really muscular. Now, just like lug nuts, when you first replace your wheels, after we run for a little bit, I'll check these to make sure they haven't loosened up. And remember, you still need to put your coolant bottle back down in its holder. And it just snaps in place. So we'll put the seat back on after we make sure it's gonna run first. Got the double chirp. Heard the, the fuel system turn on. It'll do those chirps like that, meaning it's ready to start. And that's about all the longer I like to run it dry, but we know it'll start. We know it's gonna run at least enough to get us in the water. So we'll check it out tomorrow morning. And then I'll give you a follow-up video or I'll put a follow-up in this video on how it runs with the new spark plugs. We'll also stop and top off the gas so we're getting as much fresh fuel in there and new spark plugs. Hopefully that solves all our issues. 
So here's the seat first section we're gonna put back on. You see there's a little tab right here. This tab is going to fit into here where the part of the air intake is. Right here. So what we wanna do when we're putting it in is make sure we've got the front lower than the back, just like this. Line that tab up and just kind of let it rock into place and then you heard the back clip. Put our little compartment back in. What's that for? Storage? Storage. And you can put your extra spark plugs in here, which I'll do before we go out tomorrow. Just to show you what they would look like. There's cutouts just for them. You can slide them down in there and the, these are just where you keep your spares. Some people like to screw them in, kind of make the thread into the plastic. So did you buy new ones for in there or just putting the old ones in? I bought new ones. I bought new ones. Two, so you got two sets. Two sets. I'll put Amazon affiliate link down below. Again, I highly recommend those NGK ones. Same thing with this back seat. You're going to put it at a little bit of an angle like this. Let the tabs fall in the front and the back will click in place. If this video helped you out or entertained you in any way, please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. it. Helps out the video, helps out the channel. And if you're not already subscribed to Purple Color Life, it's lots of projects outside, rural living, do it yourself projects like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.